This is a little ball mill I built for making fine aluminum powder for thermite as well as flash powder. As you can see for the power source it uses a dryer motor right here. The dryer motor gets kind of hot but as you can see there are two large fans on it. The white one as well as this little black one. And those keep it acceptably cool. Its power goes through here just like it was in the drying machine. And it goes through this cord back to here. There aren't any off switches, but it really doesn't need one. It just kind of stays on 24-7. And then the pulley on this motor goes through a belt salvaged from an old scanner or a printer into a pulley I made out of two lids from food containers. One of them is a peanut butter jar. The other is a cheese jar. That in turn drives this printer assembly. It's kind of got this rubbery coating on the wheels and that gives a good grip on the um, milling jar. And then here are two caster wheels salvaged from an old rear projection TV. I don't have any bearings in here. As you can see, it's just kind of wood and then more wood but I used some hobby kit grease to grease up those holes and that seems to work really well. The rod doesn't get hot so I don't think the wood is getting hot either. For the mill jar, I'm using a fish oil container. Really any container will work as long as it's about the right size for the number of balls you're using and the speed. You'll want about half full in terms of ball mill balls in your jar. So I've got steel balls from a magnetic toy set in here to about the halfway line and then the rest is filled with shredded aluminum foil and then that in turn gets changed into powder which then can be used for thermite and so the ball mill jar goes right here the motor spins turns this which reduces the speed because the motor spins at a very very high speed which would undoubtedly destroy any contraption I directly drove with it so this pulley reduces the speed, and this drives it, and this keeps it up. The ball mill is at a slight slant because of these little wooden shims, and that keeps the ball mill jar from traveling this way, and so it keeps it pressed against the back wall right here. So I'll turn it on and show you, and then I'll show you what the aluminum powder looks like inside. Now the ball mill is running. It's kind of loud because of the very large fan, but it seems to work pretty well, so I'm okay with the noise. This is in my garage, so I also don't really hear too much of the noise inside. As you can see, the shaft drives the ball mill jar, and then that's spinning at maybe 80 RPMs, which seems to be about right for the number of balls I have in there. If you build one of these, you'll have to play around with that until you get a continuous clatter. If you go too fast, you'll centrifuge your balls and they'll stick to the sides. If you go too slow, they'll just roll around on the bottom. It took me about a year to get to this stage, so don't be discouraged if you have to play around with it a little bit. But the result will definitely pay off when you have fine aluminum powder for awesome pyrotechnic compositions. Okay, I estimate it's been about a week since I first put the aluminum shreds in the ball mill. And now I'm going to take it out and see what it looks like. It should be a fine powder. Here is the kind of plastic. I think it's from a newspaper bag. I use that to provide an extra tight seal between this cap and the threads on here. It just kind of helps ensure that no aluminum powder leaks out. As you can see, it's kind of been turned silver by the very fine aluminum dust. And inside, it's kind of hard to see, but it's about half full. Wow, that is fine. I'll we'll have to get the rest of, of that out later but you can see there's the steel balls from the magnet toys and that aluminum looks to be about the consistency of a coarse flower, I'd say. It's very fine. You can 
see how smooth the impression is.